Hey folks, uh, Dave Parrish here with Knack Builders doing another uh, another topic for you guys. If you could, make sure you subscribe to this channel or like the video if you find some value in it. Here's today's topic. Five newbie mistakes when dealing with Knacks. I do a lot of training uh, for new folks that are... They try. They start trying to build, and they're just confused, and they hire me to sort of get them over a hump. And these are some common things that I see a lot. Uh, that if you have them, if you understand them, things are going to go a lot smoother. So I'll be back in a moment to uh, to go through those. Thanks. Okay. Let's jump into this. Um, five newbie mistakes. Um, first one is when you have connected objects, what direction should those? This is probably the biggest one. Um, let me give you an example here. Here's a simple, this is one of their template things. But we have customers and we have invoices. These are related to one another. One customer can have many invoices that makes sense the relationship is one to many learn that you're going to use it a lot or parent child um, the direction you want this connection is you want to you want it to initiate in the invoices so if we go to invoices the child record almost always should have the uh, the connection. That means the field that connects these together um, resides in the child, the invoice. And an easy way to think of it too is when you're looking at the ch child record, you want to be able to see whose customer that is. You could do this in the customer, but it get it get weird. It, it actually works, but you'd have a you'd have a the connection thing would have. Um, a bunch of customer or a bunch of invoices in it all grouped together in one field it just it doesn't make sense and if it was resided in customer you wouldn't be able to see what invoice uh or what customer you just make sure we have an invoice this is one of these line items you can see who the customer is um i think i have another video on this on most of these topics I have other videos uh let's see what the next one is display field this one, the display field is right here. If you go to any object, you click next to its name, settings, display field. What this means is whatever you set, you can set any of the fields as the display field. It is what is going to show up in the connected record. I just had that parent or the, the customer invoice thing. The customer's name shows up in the child record for the invoice that is what will be displayed and depending on what order you do this and that defaults to like whatever this is called invoice name uh, select what you want and sometimes too if you need more information like you you wanted to know I don't know the ID and the customer you wanted them displayed in the same field you can make a uh, text formula that combines those two and you can set that as as the uh, uh, display field and again I have another video on that let's see what's next parent versus child this is meaning what data should reside where and I'm going to give you this example here's a big app but we have literally parents and child we have parents and we have their children right here and here's just I'm going to this is sort of a big topic but here's an example and I think even on this one we initially and when I was first given the data, uh, children had, for example, their address. We want to know the child's address. Well, uh, in this case, the parent's address is the child's address. And there isn't really an exception to that. So we don't need um, a field in the child for their address because we're going to capture it in the um, in the parents and it will always be available for that child um, so when you're looking at your data and again one-to-many's are a good thing 
any data that's inherent to the parent and it's always going to be that it may change but it's still only related to the parent um doesn't need to be in the child record uh think through your data and that takes a little while to get used to before you recognize really quickly here's where this needs to be and here's where that needs to be let's see what the next one is logged in views this is really powerful for, for NAC. uh and this takes a little bit getting used to too. Uh, here's an example. This is a logged in view. This is when a customer or someone logs in, you only or you only want to see their stuff. It could be, I don't know, leads assigned to salespeople or uh, service requests re assigned to a technician, whatever. Um, first of all, here's an. This is already built, but here's an example. Um, let's just add one and this that makes this easy but you still got to understand it let's add a table I want to add a table of services right here is where it asks you don't just don't flip through this all services that will show everything service this would be more for an admin side it wants to see all of them you want to select services connected to the logged in customer and if you have more than one connection it's going to give you multiple options sometimes those can be confusing but think it through and if you're having a problem of how things are displayed, you're like, ah, oh, this isn't working right. Always do this. This is the first thing you got to do. In that, or engage whatever you want to look at, the page element. Go to source, and the top thing, look at what it is. This table displays service records connected to the logged in customer. If you did not do that, it might just say this table displays service records. So do that. And let's see the last one here. Two must-have fields. I have a video on that too. Um, but this, you don't always use it. But when you need it, you need it. And I use it a lot. But let's go to... Uh, okay, let's go to this one. Um, children. Date created. And every one of your objects put this in there. You're going to create a field. You're going to make its default current date. If you want time, you can get time. Um, you will know when that was created. And when you're troubleshooting, it is extremely helpful to know that. And the second thing you need is a unique ID. Now, in this case, we have, I think it's this number. Every child has, and the school system is already assigned a unique ID number. Uh, this comes in, and if you don't have data that already has a unique ID, set an auto increment. NAC has an auto increment field that just starts one, two, three, four for every record. Um, when you're troubleshooting, this helps you uh, identify a record very quickly. Instead of saying, well, the one on this date, and then their name is this, and this and that. No, you just say go to number five, two, three, right? Um, and also when you're batch or when you're importing and especially when you're match importing you need that's it's not complicated but you got to know what you're doing but it's very useful tool and to use it you have to have a unique id and having a unique id from the get-go is best so um that's what i got today i hope that was somewhat useful um i probably could come up with another list for another video but those are the ones I thought of for this one. Thanks, folks.